It's been a whirlwind summer for you. Cooperstown, Philadelphia, Cleveland, Chicago, and you saved the best for last. I did, Minnesota. absolutely. <laughs> you know, they're they're all they were all great stops and it's been a it's been a special time for our family. One and oh the count as the twins hit here down four to nothing. What was your favorite memory of your time here? It's just a year and a half. It seems like it was longer because you had so many memorable moments. You know, there were so many. I mean, moving coming to this ballpark and watching it open up and you know, all of a sudden going from the dome to outdoor baseball, you know, you could see the people here just loved coming to the ballpark. And uh, we fed off of that. We you know, watching watching the fans and then the team we the teams we had here. Uh, gosh, we had so many great players. It was such a joy to play with them. Winning the division the first year, we all yeah. remember the walk off against Matt Thornton. Oh, yeah. Now, 600 home runs and how many walk offs, but that one has to be. It's better. right up there, yeah. especially. I was going to ask Sox. you that. I was going to ask you that. You did, you know, uh, uh, 600 home runs. Do some of them stick out? Few of them. Yeah, yes. I bet. Yeah, I, bet. Just, uh, I mean, when you hit 600, I mean, 100 of them probably stick out. Oh I mean, yeah. But, but uh, what what were some of the what were some oh, of the? Oh, I, I would say the 600th in Detroit. Sure. Both of those that night, 599, 600. The walk off, 500 in Chicago was amazing. Uh, there were some early in the years at the old ballpark in Cleveland when mom and dad were traveling from Peoria. You're a young player trying to make it to the major leagues. I remember one time mom and dad were on the on deck circle first row and I hit a home run and they were the first people I first oh, wow. when I looked in the crowd so they were the great. first ones I saw and I mean there were some of the playoff home runs the one against Brad Klontz the Atlanta Braves. Uh, Basio in the postseason. The the I don't the time we don't have enough time to keep going on. It's <laughs> you hit too many of them. <laughs> I hit the too many pole, of them. But the flag the flag pole, pole, one. Yes. I remember that one. How about how about way way that up one, there that one, the batter's eye here. That was O'Sullivan I think from the Royals. But uh, you did it twice. You came back with the Phillies and did it again. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what it's all about. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You know, so we were talking about earlier, Jim. I, 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 I feel like uh, in my, in my heart, in my stomach, you're like the left-handed Harmon Killebrew. Thank you, you. One of the best home run hitters I ever, I ever saw. And and I, you came in the league after I, I'd been retired after we won the World Series in '87 here, and I'd been out four years. But you know, as an old guy, not that far out of the game, you watch young players come in, and and to watch you through your career. As a as a uh, a guy that followed the game as long played the games followed the game as long as I did it was a privilege to watch you hit oh, it, it thank really you. was and 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 it's a privilege for everybody the, one of the reasons why you get to travel around and, and and have these Hall of Fame moments in all these ballparks is is because of the Hall of Fame guy that you are too thank and, uh, you it, it's a, it, it was a privilege to watch that well and I, I, I appreciate that and any time your name is mentioned with Harmon Killebrew. You know, going to the Hall of Fame this year, you know, like loving the game and the history of the game, the Stan Musial, you know, the guys way before all of us. And it would have been so awesome to have Harmon there. But I know he was there in some capacity. So, oh, no. my. my goodness. <laughs> wow. Jim Tomey. A prodigious home run by Sano into the third deck, and the Twins are on the board, his 12th of the year. You know, it's not often easy. We're up here in the booth, and we've got uh, headphones on, and the sound is is muffled. That ball was a crack that you hear through headphones, just like when you hit him. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's. Oh my God! Watch Look this. You're going to appreciate this much, anybody. Oh my 91 in and I'm guessing about 115 going out 113 off the bat they didn't <laughs> measure that did they when you no, when you played? no I was always taught it's not how hard it comes off the bat it's how many you hit over it <laughs> <laughs> if you can master doing that that's what it's about but gosh these guys are so strong so no I mean to watch him progress. It's going to be fun as the years uh, go on. What a monster. They measured it at 455 feet, but Mr. Tomey here still has the longest home run ever hit here. 
fouled back. What's the what's the farthest one to left center? How high up? I don't know how uh, how far the farthest one up there in the in the third deck, but that one right there from uh, Sonoma has got to be one of the. It's got to be close. And there have been quite a few hit up into the third deck. How about when you sat up there and in, in, uh, to to show where uh, Harmon would have hit that ball in the met in uh, the old met where he hit it where it would have been here. Yeah, I, <laughs> that was uh, that was an uneasy feeling up there. You're by yourself. I'm in that corner. Yeah, wait. the wind was hitting that night and. I'm coming down like, oh man, I'm gonna take my time. <laughs> that's that's an awful long way to hit. <laughs> way up ball. there where that young man in the black shirt is, where you were sitting. Incredible. To show where Harmon's ball would have landed had it been here. You know, and it's a testament to the impact you had on all of us when you played here. I emceed the ceremony that night, and that's the only part that the connection between you and Harmon. That's the only part that grabbed me. It, Thank was, it you. was a really emotional time to think that Harmon was. Represented somehow with Thank someone you. who, who uh, he was very fond of, uh, and that was one of the t most touching moments of that whole ceremony for me. You know, anytime you met Harmon, you were the lucky one because he, he'd give everybody the time of day, and just an incredible man. I'm so grateful and lucky that our paths cross. We're gonna have more with Jim Tomey here in just a moment. The Twins on the board, thanks to a Sano moonshot. I threw a first pitch out in Charlotte. First time I ever did, and I thought, man, don't bounce it. Right. So I overthrew it. <laughs> I overthrew it. And since then, I've been able to do a few of the first pitches. So I thought, I, I said to myself, just slow down a little bit. Don't, you don't have to be in such a hurry. Hey, I want to turn this around on you. And it's, I'm sorry, it's kind of an abstract question to, to, to throw at you. But we mentioned you had such a great impact in this area. You were so revered by the fans. And no player has come in here in a, such a short period of time, year and a half, and have the impact on and off the field that you had. Why do you think that was? Why do you think you had such an impact in a place where you only played for a year and a half? Oh, I, I mean, I think as the player, you want to come to the ballpark, you want to show people how much you love the game, and just play the game. Play the game like you always have. And... Actually, I would say like they 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 showed me so much love here. I think as a player you want to give that back and then all of a sudden maybe there's this connection and then it wasn't just me. It was the way Kadir played. It was right. the way Punto played as a bench guy. It was the play when how Kubel played when he got the opportunity. There's a unique gift that the Twins organization has and that's. They teach the game how you should play it, and it's been passed down for many, many years. And I think the fans can relate to that. Yeah, but I got to tell you, there's I I, I want to jump in on on that a, a, a part of the answer to your question too, Dick, about about this this guy because Twins fans watched you as the great player that you were for a lot of years with all these other teams, and then you come here. This is it. it this is going to be a two-part answer, but you come here. And you, you're the same guy on and off the field that, that we had been watching and Twins fans had been watching for a lot of years. And it would have been understandable toward the end of your career, I think, for Twins fans if you weren't quite the player that, that you had been. But you were that player here. I think you played something somewhere 170 some games and it you put up the same kind of numbers, the 30 plus home runs and the uh, close to 100 RBIs in the in that almost 162 you know like mannered season so you were you I think he was beloved because even toward the end of his career he was the player and the guy that we had always watched as you as you beat the twins with other teams and I, I you know at that point in my career I came here as a bench player and I think one of the things I appreciate Gardy was that Gardy really did a great job at handling our bench. We had some guys that were everyday players. Me more in the twilight of my career, health-wise, he monitored that well, but he had a great way of using his bench and the everyday guys to where we all had success. And I really credit him a lot for that. That's the year I think Morneau got the concussion. Yes. So then my playing time picked up and I was fortunate that he still monitored that but gave me those at bats and I you know like like we all know you got to play to 
get better, and I was fortunate to do that. Chapman at first, Lowry retired, and Davis at the plate, and it's one and one. I don't think people uh, realize, and not, not that you or anybody else would talk about it, but it was a battle for you toward the end of yeah. your career to, to stay healthy enough to, to go out and, and be effective. And, and uh, you were that. You kept doing that work, and, and you, you did continue to be effective. Right center field, Kepler. Now on the track, out number two, and Chapman will. But there's a lot that goes into that. There's a lot of work that you do, and there's a lot of there's a lot of planning by the manager and the coaching staff. And what you're alluding to is that they're they're looking at okay, who are the pitchers that are coming up, and where's a good chance for me to not have Jim play, and where do I want to make sure I get him in there? All, all those things. I think those are the kind of things you're talking about. He did a wonderful job, and. There were days I'd get here at 1 o'clock, 12.30, 1 o'clock, prepare all day for one at bat, one pinch hit. And there was nothing like coming out of the dugout and <laughs> pinch hitting. The, and it, it gave me a, it, later in my career, I really was not a very good pinch hitter, but it, there was the moment that I did pinch hit was like no other, getting that feeling either tie a game, win a game, or get a big hit. That, that would put your team ahead and that boy I love that preparation all day it was so worth it for just even one at bat. <laughs> Jim congratulations Thanks, again. Guys. It was been a wonderful summer and it's been Appreciate a great it. tribute to the Twins organization. Congrats, thank you.